Okay, so this, this is an experimental design question, and um, it pertains to the resistivity of a, of a rod, of a, of a cylindrical rod that is conducting. So current can flow through the rod. So the starting equation is, so if you have a rod, and let's say that the length of this rod is L, and the thickness of it, the cross-sectional area is A, the resistance of the rod is going to be the resistivity times the length of the rod over A. So this, this equation will definitely be important um, in this problem. Now, this question asks us to uh, determine a procedure that would allow us to determine the resistivity of the, of the rod. So where does it say that? Describe a procedure including yeah, so we want to determine uh, the resistivity of the rod. So let's just go ahead and do what, what the, what the uh, diagram, what, what, what would be the setup for experimentally determining the resistivity of, of, of a rod? So you're going to want to take your given material. So we're given a voltmeter, an ammeter, wires, uh, a, a power supply, and a metric ruler. So the setup's going to look like this. So we're going to take our battery and we're going to put an ammeter into the circuit. Now ammeters always go into the circuit in series uh, and ammeters, they should be invisible. So you, you, a thing to know about ammeters is the resistance should be very, very low. You want this ammeter to be invisible. And then the rod is basically going to be a uh, resistance in the circuit that's functioning you know this is basically the resistor um, and then the voltmeter now we want to know to to find the resistivity so so the resistance of a uh, of a rod like this it, it equals resistivity l over a we in order to find this resistivity we need to know the resistance. What is the resistance of that rod? Well, we can do that with Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is delta V equals IR. So the resistance of that rod, we could say is equal to delta V over I. But the thing to realize here, this delta V, you know, it's not the voltage of the battery, right? Because, you know, the, let's say the battery is E, which is basically a potential difference. Uh, we're not talking about the voltage of the battery because what if there were other resistors in the circuit? So, so just for a moment, let's put other resistors in the circuit. This experiment would still work as long as we're measuring the voltage across that rod. So you, you want the voltmeter to be placed across the rod so we can measure specifically the voltage across it. Okay, uh, and if that's the case, I mean, would these other resistors be affecting the circuit? Absolutely, but for purposes of what we're trying to do, uh, we, we could still find the resistance of the rod by knowing the voltage across it and the current through it. Okay, so the setup we're gonna use is this. This is the diagram that you want for this problem. Okay, so describe a procedure. So the procedure is going to be uh, place the ammeter in series with the rod using the connecting wires, place the voltmeter across the conducting rod in parallel, and connect everything in series to the DC power supply. Then you got two choices for how you want to do this because we're ultimately trying to find uh, the resistivity of the rod. The two ways to do this, so let me summarize this, that you, you have two options. Option number one is you can use one rod and change uh, the voltage of the battery change voltage of battery. That would work. So 
because um, they, they tell us here it's a variable output power supply. So this would be one option. Use one rod, and then you're, what you would be doing is changing the voltage of the power supply, which in turn would change the voltage across the conducting rod. Okay, the second possibility here is to use multiple rods. You could use multiple rods and then and keep the voltage of power supply, <coughs> I'll put PS of power supply constant. Okay, so why don't we go with which either procedure is fine. Why don't we go with, um, um, let's see what I did. Why don't we go with, um, we'll, we'll use one rod. let's do this option. So if you're using one rod, your procedure is gonna talk about uh, measure the length of the rod measure the diameter of the rod in order to to figure out the cross-sectional area. So you got to talk about using this metric ruler. You're going to collect length of rod and get cross-sectional area of rod. And then you're going to talk about, um, if you didn't do so already, how to, how to hook everything up. This is, how, this is what you want to describe in words. And then you're going to talk about uh, changing the voltage of the battery and recording uh, the corresponding voltage across the, the rod and the current through the rod. So your data table would kind of look like um, this. Let me go to a new. So your data table would be like, why is that not? So you'd have a data table where you're measuring uh, current through the rod, measured in amps. You're measuring voltage across, measured in volts. Um, and you've, re you've recorded the length of the rod and you've figured out the cross-sectional area. Okay, so that would be, I think that's all the data you would need. Current and voltage. And you got the length and the area over here. So. Uh, so you're changing the voltage, you know, you're, you're, you're changing the voltage, which is going to give a new current like that. Okay, now, I think that's pretty good. So we, do, we have the diagram, we talked about the procedure. Now, describe how the data could be graphed in a way that is useful for determining the resistivity of the material. Uh, describe how the graph could be analyzed to calculate the resistivity. So let's click back here. Okay, so we're going to make a graph. Now, uh, we want this to be linear because we're, we're going to be figuring out the resistivity from the slope. So ultimately what we want is we, we want to get a graph that's going to be a straight line so then we can go to that graph and we can be like, ah, the slope is equal to something that involves the resistivity. So you got to think, okay, if we want a straight line, straight line is Y equals MX plus B. So what are the equations that are at play here? Well, we know that uh, the resistance of the rod, it's resistivity L over A, but we also know that resistance from Ohm's law, you know, delta V equals IR. So R is delta V over I. We can plug this in up here, which gives us the equation of delta V over I equals resistivity L over A. So for this particular approach, I said, let's use only one rod. So if we're using only one rod, uh, we're going to have a set length and a set cross-sectional area. So this is going to be constant, and the, resist, the resistivity is going to be constant as well, because that's a property that's unique to the material. And then the things that are going to be changing will be uh, the voltage and the current, the voltage across the rod and the current through the rod. And uh, you know what? This third column, what I would do, make the third column R. 
because if you take voltage and divide by current, that's going to give that's going to give resistance. Um, so our graph would look like this. So we're gonna we're gonna graph. Uh, wait, hold on here. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. What do we want to graph here? We're gonna want to. No, because the resist, hold up, the resistance is constant. The, the resistance of the rod is constant, but voltage, okay, I apologize. Go like this. You're, we're going we're gonna to set this up as delta V equals resistivity L over A times the current. There we go. So on the Y axis, we're going to put voltage. And then on the X axis, we're going to put the current. And then the slope of this is going to equal resistivity L over A, which is the resistance. There we go. So this would be the approach. So you're going to talk about, uh, so don't do that, because the, the resistance is constant. This should be a constant value. So we're going to graph voltage on the Y, current on the X. So this fits the, this fits the equation of a straight line. Voltage goes on Y, current goes on X, the slope is going to be equal to resistivity L over A. So then you'd say, determine the slope of the line, determine the slope of the line, set the slope equal to resistivity L over A. We've measured L, we've measured A, solve for resistivity. Okay, so the next question. Okay, so the next question is, <clears throat> the students are now given a rectangular rod of material as shown below. The dimensions are not known. The students are asked to experimentally determine the resistance of the rod. They obtain the data in the table below for the potential difference across the rod and the current in it. Okay, this question is super easy. This, this is a lot easier than before. So let's go to the next page. On the axes below, uh, we're gonna plot the data. Okay, so I'm not going to go through and have you guys watch me plot data, but basically, in fact, let me pull up the answer key. Basically, you know, you want to make sure you label your axes. If you don't do this, they're going to take points off. So you're going to put current on the x axis, that's amps. You're going to put voltage on the y axis, and then you're going to plot your data points, you know, so scale this out. And you're going to get data points like this. You're going to like point, 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 you know, plot the data. One thing to be aware of when you do your best fit line, what they look for, uh, you, you want to have the same number of points above the line as you do below the line. So you could kind of go like this, you know, go boom and draw your best fit line. You want to have, so we have two points above and then two points below. That's the key for best fit lines. Um, the slope of this line, as we did earlier in our procedure for finding resistivity, if you have voltage uh, versus current, uh, so you're like, okay, straight line, Y equals MX plus B. Ah, what's on the Y axis? Ah, that's voltage. What's on the X axis? Oh, that's current. This should look familiar. Delta V equals I R. The slope is going to equal the resistance. So uh, important, do not use data points for your calculations. Uh, if they catch you doing that, you will lose credit. Uh, you want to make sure that you use points that are on your best fit line. You know, so go to the best fit line and be like, ooh, that's a good point. And then best fit line, ooh, there's a good point. And then take the slope, 
rise over run, you're gonna set that, the slope is gonna be equal to the resistance. And it comes out to be like somewhere around 75, if you, if you do the, the numbers correctly. Okay, so that is part B. Okay, part C. Okay, after completing their calculations, the students begin to consider the factors that might have produced uncertainties. The students realize they did not take into account the internal resistance of the power supply. Briefly describe how this would affect the value of the resistance of the rectangular rod. Now, the, here's the thing. So they're, the way they did this, in fact, let's go back and look. So the students are given a rectangular rod. Uh, the students, they obtain the data for the, so right here, the potential difference across the rod. That's key right there. So in this table, the delta V, it's the potential difference across the rod. Now, why is that important? It's important because basically here is their setup. What they did is they, you know, they had a power supply and they took this rod, right? They took this rod and they measured the potential difference across the rod. And then of course the current through it, which is gonna be, you know, stick an ammeter right here. That's gonna give you the current through the rod because everything's in series. But what they're saying here is they're like, oh, they didn't take into account internal resistance. So what internal resistance is, it's like a little resistor that comes with the battery. So let's say that this represents the battery. If you have an internal resistance, you know, so let's say that this battery is labeled as like, I don't know, 12 volts, 12 volt battery. If you have an internal resistance and you come up to this battery and you measure across it, you're like, you put in a voltmeter right there, what internal resistance does is when current goes through that little internal resistance, uh, you're gonna get a voltage drop, which means instead of getting the full 12 volts, it's gonna be like 11.5 or something. You know, internal resistance lowers the voltage of the battery. But in this particular problem, the, uh, the answer to this question is, uh, the, if they forgot to take into account internal resistance, it will do absolutely nothing to their results. And the reason why is because the data they collected was that uh, they had voltage across that rod, right? As long as they're measuring the voltage across the rod and then the current going through the rod, it's gonna come out fine, you know, cause say there was internal resistance, oh man, there, there's, there's internal resistance. So yeah, uh, this, this voltage might go down a little bit, but then so would the current, you know, everything would adjust accordingly. Okay, so briefly describe how this would affect, it would not affect it and explain your reasoning. So the reasoning is, is that the voltmeter was hooked directly across the rod being analyzed and the, and the, vo the voltage across the rod was measured and current through the rod. Okay, this last question. The students realized they did not take into account a possible change in temperature of the rods. Should the students be concerned about this? Yes, because uh, if the temperature of a rod changes, and, and there, there's no equations in AP Physics 2 for this, it's just something generally to be aware of. But if the temperature of this rod changes, you know, it's basically, it, it's changing the material of the rod. It's no longer, uh, you know, the exact same rod under the exact same conditions. A change of temperature would cause a uh, change in the resistivity, okay? All right, so that's that one. So any, any questions on that one before we go to the next one? Are we good? Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Um, 
it comes to the first part, the experimental design. Yes. So what I did was I said, basically, I, I put one and two together. Um, I did um, where you'd use one rod and change the voltage of the battery and find the resistances at each of those voltages and then average those out to find the resistance of that rod. And then yep. you do that for multiple rods. Would that be okay? But I think they want you to use a graph, right? Wait, hold on. Well, yeah, because yeah, you can still use a graph, but actually the graph would be um, resistance versus uh, length over area ratio. But the resistance. So what you did? So you did resistance versus length over area. Yeah, and it's still linear, and the slope is actually uh, just the resistivity itself. Oh well, if you if you did this, you weren't doing one rod; you were doing multiple rods. Yeah, but it was like I would change the voltage for every rod. Uh, like once I had a one rod in, change the voltage, um, the different amounts, and then find the resistance at each of those amounts and average those out to just find the overall resistance of that rod. Yeah, I mean that would that would work. I think it would if you did multiple rods though. If you did this option here where you had multiple rods, so if you, did, if you did the option of multiple rods, then you should be talking about, you know, lay your rods out, you know, you're going to make a data table of length and cross-sectional area, right? You got to, you know, take, take these values down for all of, the, uh, all of the rods. But I think it would be much easier to keep the voltage of the power supply constant and then so with multiple rods, you would make a graph of L over A. What would that be? L over A versus R, R. essentially. Yeah. And then this would give a straight line. And then you would, so what would that be? I got to figure it out again. So you basically, we're going to have uh, delta V over I equals resistivity L over A, L over A. But this is basically just R. That's the resistance. Yeah, then the slope of this, the slope of this would just be the resistivity. Yeah. yeah. But like I was changing the voltage for um, one rod because uh, I guess I've given more accurate. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying because ultimately what you did is you were like resistance equals delta V over uh, 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 I, right? And then, so yeah, that would still work. Because if you if you change if you change the voltage and then measure and then measure the corresponding current, yeah, as long as you're solving for resistance, that would be fine. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, should we go to the next? I got one more queued up that I thought we would do, and then I'm gonna, I'm going to be posting these. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the what we do here today and then post them individually.